Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. Space, space, space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one, The Shadow, written by Nobleman L.T. The creature, secretly cuffed to the hook on the table, was slowly coming back to consciousness. Without even its stereotypical eyes fully opened, its shadow jumped into guarded position. The creature was soon to follow. But it noticed the cubs, and after slowly sitting upright, just pulled them a couple of times, probably just testing the strength of the bindings. We had to improvise. The ship's encounter was barely over, and our scanners indicated that only a few materials would be able to keep it relatively restrained. Its shadow started moving around the room, lighting up the various colors on different parts of the body. Fascinating. It's as if the gaze leads the shadow to simulate an outcome. After a couple seconds, the shadow began drifting behind the creature, and a deep red light started to glow where the cups were touching the creature's surface. It is obviously aware of the bindings and is calming down, but how? I step forward. Both it and the shadow immediately focus on my body. I wait a couple seconds to show that I am not aggressive. They both calm down as I approach opposite the creature. We need to know what it is, where it comes from, and how many are there. I project my shadow in front of its face, forming an inquisitive sphere to ask about its origins. No reaction. The creature just stares at me. His shadow is pulsating red on the end of its limbs, where the cuffs are attached to the host's body. I try to push my shadow inside of his brain. As soon as my projection touches the skin, his shadow quickly swats at my sphere, like it was a Garuvian fly, causing me to step back and almost lose my balance. The creature faces shows no reaction, aside from a small eye twitch due to a drop of its blood rolling down from its head. One would assume with such prominent shadow, telepathy would be preferred mode of communication for this creature. Fine, we'll use sound waves. Fortunately, all interrogation rooms come standard equipped with a universal translator. Who are you? I ask. The shadows immediately stood up and started looking around the room for the source of the sound. The creature lifted its eyebrow in surprise and replied, Darbus. The shadow calmed down and was no longer interested in the source of the sound. Where are you from? I continued. His shadow started to slowly envelop his body, returning a natural black into a deep, deep red color. I've never seen anything like it. It's as if there's two separate creatures. The host is unaware of the shadow, and the shadow protects the host from the outside world. I knew I had to calm him down before he hurts himself. My apologies, sir. We just want to know who you are. Our first encounter was a bit chaotic. We received a signal that some sort of organic matter was crossing the perimeter of reservation. We jumped to location and found you. We tried to pull you in gently to our hangar bay, but uh, you opened fire and triggered a resonance in our beam, causing our ship to explode. The creature stopped hugging the creature, and its color turned back to black, except for the wrists that were still bright red. Both the host and the shadow seemed to be very aware of the bindings. Uh, I see. Reservation, you say. Well, well, that explains a lot. The shadow began pulsating with lights where his head should be. You just blew my mind. I assure you, we do not wish to blow your mind. We, in fact, would very much like to keep it functioning as long as possible. A creature with such an impressive shadow is quite a valuable resource. I mean, it's not that impressive. It all depends on the light source uh, and angle. Fascinating. You believe I'm talking about the dark area created by you blocking the light? Well, yeah. What other shadows are there? You mean to tell me you don't see that? And I pointed at the dark cloud behind him. See what? There's nothing else here besides you and me. Fascinating. Good to know. I shape my shadow into a sharp bolt and fire it with all my might. What happened next was like a bad joke. His shadow just caught my projection in one of its limbs, looked at it and threw it to the ground, causing me to also drop to my knees. This time, however, the host looked angry. Did you just try to probe my mind? Are you some kind of telepath? We have the fiction of our capabilities like that. Never thought it would be actually possible. I gather myself up, still shaken from the sharp pain. Look at the creature, his shadow, and say, Your shadow is very potent. You will be a valuable resource for harvesting. 
The weapons we can produce with such psychic potency, such raw emotion as fuel, nobody will be able to stand in our way. Tell me where you come from, and I promise a painless integration in our systems. His skin suddenly changes from white to a red. His shadow matches that color when quickly wraps around his host body. Before his face fully consumed, he just utters, I don't think so. Suddenly, the glowing areas on his wrists move to his left arm and become extremely bright. The creature puts his left hand down on the table and smashes with his right arm. The shadow pulsating white veins with pain of the host felt, but it's as if it was absorbing the neural signals to numb the sensation, and only a small amount of the light made it all the way to the brain. The creature smashed his hand again, breaking the largest digit. Again, the pain signals were absorbed by the shadow. How is he not aware of this? It seems impossible. I was watching his actions in disbelief. With a thumb broken, he slipped his left hand out of the cuff, the chain now dangling loose in his right. He gripped it tight and proceeded to walk towards me. His shadow shroud began glowing red where his eyes were. I knew what was coming. He began to beat me with the chain until I could no longer get up. With every hit, his shadow sent pulses of joy throughout his body, rewarding his violent frenzy every time his strike landed. And the host reveled in this violence, each strike stronger than the last. Two creatures, one physical, one mental, pushing each other further and further into bloodlust. Soon I felt almost no pain as darkness began to consume me. Death was coming for me. My own shadow let out a scream of hopeless terror, as I heard many times before from my enemies. Involuntary reaction. I was ashamed I could not control my shadow in these final moments, that my civilized psyche reverted back to the prey instincts my species once was. But the creature stopped. It's as if they heard my dying scream. Both the host and the shadow turned bright blue. I haven't seen the color of mercy in a long time. Last thing I remember seeing, he touched his neck with two fingers. Did you get all that? Yeah, harvesters, I know, right? Brains are so cliche. All right, send Evac. I'll meet you at the hangar. Then proceeded to punch a hole in the composite plastic door and leave. His shadow still shrouding his body, still numbing the pain, still feeding his frenzy with every punch. End of story. Story number two. Admiral Stabby's conquest of Baymaid. Written by Weijin Warrior. The Mermaidian Emperor loomed over the table, dwarfing the seated Terran delegation. The rest of the Mermaidian delegation stood to one side, with the one known of the mouth standing slightly ahead of the others. Against the far wall, an honor guard of the Terran Space Navy was watching. The negotiations had been going on for days, with no end in sight. Tradition, the Emperor's mouth said for the nth time must be upheld. Only the Emperor can command the respect and obedience of the Mermaidians. Only the Emperor can lead the Mermaidians, and there is no tradition, no mention on the law of the Emperors to surrender. Your navy is history, one of the human delegations pointed out patiently. Your army is but dust. Your cities are rubble. Surrender is the only sensible option available to you at this point. We acknowledge that, the Emperor's mouth replied. But there is no tradition for it. We must follow tradition. Without tradition, what are we? We recognize the need to lay down our arms, but we have no tradition for it. The Terran delegation whispered amongst themselves. Just as one of them got ready to speak up, there was a commotion from the entranceway. Admiral on deck, one of the Terran marines shouted, resulting in the din of human soldiers straightening up. The Bermadians straightened too, trying to perceive what the commotion was about. While nothing could be seen, Two of the human soldiers flinched while trying to stand to attention. What is going on? The mouth demanded. I think... Yes, one of the Terran delegations said as he lifted his legs off the floor. It seems like Grand Admiral of the Fleet Stabby has decided to grace us with his visit. He is uh, a tradition in Terran Space Navy. A soft whine was heard as the highly modified autonomous cleaning pot whizzed past. Two of the Bermadians suddenly bent over grabbing their suddenly bleeding lower limbs. Origin is lost in the depths of time, the Terran delegates continued, or rather, in the depths of Navy law. But tradition is that if Grand Admiral of the Fleet Stabby, um, stabs someone, he gains the rank of that person stabbed. The Mermadians looked at one another. 
This is uh, traditional, the mouth asked as the Bermadian emperor flinched and looked down. Oh, yes, the navy is quite insistent upon it, like, uh, oh, splicing the main brace and crossing the line. I believe, the mouth said slowly as the emperor brought his hand up after touching his lower limb, bright green with blood. Then we might have a solution. By the grace of the emperor, Stabby. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the Tier 5 members, Marky, Cam Maxwell, Caspar Arnolds, Oakfield, Lord Azrakul, and it's difficult to pronounce. Thank you very much.